Hi guys, today we're joined by a very special guest, someone that's brought a lot of joy and a lot of laughter to a lot of people, Mr. George Capaneros. Hi George, and thanks for being Thank here. Thank you, thanks for having me everyone. Thank you. So tell us, how did you get into this industry? Oh, that's a long story. Long story? <laughs> long story. How much time have we got? <laughs> But basically, it's what came naturally to me was uh, performing and, you know, being funny and getting kicked out of the classroom. And that's what I, I did, you know. I watched a lot of TV <laughs> yeah. when I was a little kid. I loved the theatre. I loved uh, going to shows. I loved watching the comedies, you know, the Jerry Lewis and the, uh, the Bob Hopes and the Abbott and Costellos and the Marx Brothers that were on Dayton TV yeah. in those days because we only had four channels or yeah. I think maybe four channels. Yeah. Three Stooges, all that sort of stuff and all the Greek movies that I used to go to with my family and watch Costa Vuzza and Vengo and those, uh, the, the Greek uh, performers too who also inspired me. So, um, and also growing up we had the Paul Hogan's and the Burt Newton's and uh, the Graham Kennedy's as well. So there was a lot of inspiration. Yeah. A lot of influence and um, and I took it on and uh, as a kid in primary school I was always involved in putting on the school plays directing the school plays starring in the school plays then led on to high school where I ended up doing drama studying theatre and drama at high school which led to me doing a course at Rusden which is a bit like Flinders in okay, here in Adelaide yeah. which was uh, media and drama uh, specializing that uh, as, a, as a teacher mm -hmm. Uh, oh. Not that I like teaching, no, okay. and yeah. at the end of uh, uh, my tertiary years, uh, I teamed up with uh, another student called uh, Simon Palmaris, mm -hmm. and we started doing stand-up comedy together as a comedy duo called the Tobaldi Brothers. Uh, when we were studying there, there was another guy there, uh, Nick Giannopoulos, who was also there in, around the same time, uh, who I never met then, but uh, Simon knew him. And so we were introduced later on and we also gelled and uh, eventually that led to us doing, um, you know, me being invited to do Wogs Out of Work with them because I was doing the Flying Doctors at the time. So I okay. ended up becoming an actor, yeah. not just a comedian. And uh, we teamed up again we did some Wogs Out of Work shows and then that led to uh, Acropolis Now, us being, uh, uh, them asking us to write a TV show, okay. you know, and we went, how are we supposed to write a TV show? We've never written for <laughs> never TV before. before. They go, don't worry about it. You just write it. We'll help you out. We'll give you Andrew Knight, you know, uh, the best in the business. He'll help you out and uh, we'll get you a producer and, you know, the whole thing, a director. And uh, we did a pilot in 1988 and we ended up doing uh, uh, our very own show, which was Acropolis Now, that? which uh, still 30 years later is still watched by many people, you know, oh, oh, yeah. either on YouTube or uh, on uh, Facebook or uh, they've got the DVDs, which I sell at all my shows. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's still popular yeah. until today. So I have that DVD collection and I can honestly say I grew up watching it. And even to this day, I still quote lines from that series. Your character in particular. Yeah, I've got and people of all just, ages coming know, up to me and going, remember when you said you know, this, blah, 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 blah. And I go, who, who said that? They yeah. go, you, that was your line. I go, yeah. was it? Because I've only seen them once. Yeah, I was going to say, you probably I did them, remember. Yeah. I saw them, and that was so it. Much stuff, and so I, I, I was waiting that. for my kids to, you know, um, be excited about them. Yeah. But it's a different generation, you know. Uh, so my kids really aren't interested. A lot of their friends are my biggest fans, you know. Okay. My, my, my son Peter, he's, he's, uh, his mate Rocco is a huge fan in his family of the Acropolis now. So they kind of uh, tell them to my son and then my son will go, yeah, oh, you're really famous apparently, you know. So... <laughs> I thought yeah. you were just my dad. I think it's starting to pick up more traction with the younger generation. Yeah, like it is. My nephew and that stuff. Well, yeah, it's it's his, it's all know. the generations. Whether yeah. you're ten, whether you, I've got a Michael Butters, which is my uh, my son's uh, godmother's yep. daughter. When she was two, she had the Wiggles under one arm, yep. on DVD, and she had a Cropless box set under the other arm, and she was two. Yeah. And that was her favourite. Favorite that was a little yeah. comfort DVDs that she took to your yards, you know, when she was being. Uh, and looked after so um, I don't think an Easter goes past where I don't watch that episode of Acropolis now you have to be like you yeah. know Greek or Cypriot or exactly. you know uh, Orthodox or something yeah. to understand it's so relatable that it's now yeah. tradition like yeah. you know Christmas time you watch a Christmas movie Easter yeah. time you we watch Greek yeah. Easter you know I even watch it you know yeah. bits of it so so what was your fondest memories of Acropolis now in that time the best part about it was actually performing in front of a live studio audience like we really looked forward to those days because mm -hmm. it was a week it was look three weeks of writing 
which was hard work, you know, trying to come up with a script. Then you bring the script to work and then your script gets scrutinised because not only the producer and the director's going through it, the other actors are going, no, I don't think my character would say that. No, I don't like this. I can't do that. There's no way I'm going to do that. So there's a lot of, you know, pressure. So eventually we rehearse it, we work it out, we do the show, a studio audience of 400 people or so would come into the studio, they'd be fired up because they'd be so excited. Mind you, the first two episodes that we shot, we had to hire an audience to come in because they didn't know what it was. Yeah, of course. In the end, you couldn't get a ticket because you couldn't buy a ticket, the tickets were given out free. So they were almost like Willy Wonka gold, golden tickets. So um, to get a ticket was really hard. But we, we had our regulars coming in, yeah. and it was almost like a soccer game. Okay. If we made a mistake, if we forgot our lines, there'd be a big, whoa, cheer, shoot, goal, they'd be calling out. So uh, it was a lot of fun, yeah. and half the show was us performing to the crowd, yeah. and then half the show was us doing the actual the filming. Yeah. So did you improv a lot during the show? Yeah, and yeah. got in trouble for doing it yeah, too. Okay. A lot of improvisation, <laughs> yeah. but we got, you know, I used, I, especially me, I used to get into yeah. a lot of trouble. Yeah. I used to take <laughs> one step too far, yeah. you know what I mean? That's a good thing about doing fringe shows, I can take one step too far, yeah. it doesn't matter, it's my show. I guess you get encouraged by the crowd, so going too far would kind of be the norm. But it was on uh, Channel 7, you know, for yeah. uh, prime time yeah. audience. I think when we finished Acropolis Now, I heard the other day that it was the highest rating show on wow. TV. Okay. But they just cancelled it, I yeah. don't know why. Um, yeah. Maybe it's it run its course. Maybe Channel Seven got new ownership. They tried something new. Uh, they wanted to introduce, I think, a new show. It was called Newly Beds, I think, okay. something like that. But um, but anyway, yeah. we were there for five years. We did yeah. sixty three episodes, and uh, and that's that's pretty. Good people are still like watching Acropolis now. No one's yeah. watching Newly Beds. That's no, for exactly. sure. Yeah. Do you ever think Acropolis now could make a comeback? No, there's no way. way. There's there is no way. no way. I remember writing a, a pilot mm. or a a script for a telemovie, like an Acropolis Now telemovie. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, and I did it with Crawfords and I tried to get interest, the others weren't interested. Yeah. You know, so uh, you need everyone to go, yeah, let's course, do it. But, yeah, no one yeah. was interested. Yeah. So, uh, unfortunately, but you know, like Faulty Towers, yeah. you know, with John Cleese, yep. they only did, I think, nine episodes, maybe 12. And, that's still, and that was it. Yeah. And it's still one of the best sitcoms ever. I guess sometimes it's not really good to revisit yeah, the past because yeah. you might not get that magic again. And yeah. at the end of Acropolis now, you know, we were so busy doing all the touring shows yeah. that we weren't able to write the show. So we had to guess, get guest writers in. Yeah. And we got the best in the business, yeah. but you know what? They didn't understand the material. Yeah. You know, you can be same. a good writer, but if it's not inside you, yeah. there's no way you're going to write yeah. For that show, yeah, of course, you know, yeah, like it needed it needed myself yeah. and Simon and Nick to keep yeah. writing with yeah. our, you know, Chris Anastasia, this our, who was our story editor at the time, you know, and then uh, Mary tried a couple of episodes too, but once we went outside of that, yeah, it, it yeah. wasn't good, it kind of it wasn't as good. It was yeah. okay, yeah, it was, yeah. it was okay, and it's all about, you know, you're in the cooking industry. It's all about recipes, you know, recipes for yeah, success, yeah. you know. Yeah, and exactly. once you start throwing stuff in us into Stefado, yeah. there's problems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I saw the other day on a Greek cooking show, anyway. Do you know like growing up Greek Australian? I know you were born here, like I was, and I really wish I could speak Greek better. Unfortunately, yeah, I can't. But it is, we are Greek Australians. Yeah. We are not Greeks, we are Greek Australians. Yeah. It's another world. And we're more like the diasporic Greeks of America, yeah. of Canada, of the UK, Johannesburg, Germany, wherever you find Greeks living outside of Greece, we're like them. Yes. And we're a lot like them. Yeah. Like Greeks from Greece, we're different. Yeah. Totally different. I just went to Greece. Yeah, I went recently, last year for the first time. And I just and went, no, no, yeah. I'm not from here. Yeah. I'm definitely not yeah. from here. My blood might have come from here, yeah. but me and Greece, we don't fit in. Even yeah. though I played the Greeks character on yeah, TV, of and of course in Acropolis now, I found myself that I'm more Australian than Greek. I went in 2018 for the first time, and I loved it. It's crazy, you know? but not for me, not yeah. for you. Yeah. You know, uh, some others can can actually tolerate it, and they yeah. don't mind. Yeah. But I just can't. You know, yeah. I was brought up differently, so yeah. I, I can't fit into that world. I don't mind the naps in the afternoon. That's yeah, all right. That was a very different lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. So, what brings you to Adelaide today? A comedy no, show. No, today I'm I'm hosting a wedding. Yep. You're so hosting I was, a wedding I was hosting today, a wedding today, and yep. I was hosting a wedding last night. Um, but I 
am about to start a show, promoting a show in yep. Adelaide. There's a couple of shows going on, but the one that I want to promote the most is uh, a show at the Rhino Room for the Fringe Festival that I'm putting together with a mate of mine called Gab Rossi. So we've called it A Night at the Wopera. Okay. So as we've mixed the word wog with opera and we've yep. come up with wopera. Of course, wop is like the American version of wog. Yep. So it's a wop and roll stand-up musical. But it's basically an excuse for us to do uh, lots of musical parody, uh, singing, uh, character work and stand-up as well. So it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be different to the other... Of course, I did the Malakas with Attitude show recently and I've done all the Trevor shows and what have you. So this is something different to what I did last time I did The Fringe. Okay. So uh, I'm really excited about this. It's going to be a great show. It's going to be... We, we, I did some improv the other day uh, in Melbourne uh, with a character, one of the characters I'm going to use in the show and it was a 10-minute routine that went for 25 minutes. So that character can do anything. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have a lot of fun. Yeah. Very musical. Um, it's a pity we only get one hour for these shows because oh, these, uh, yeah. these fringe shows go for one hour and then you go to the next show. But come, enjoy yeah. it. All right, that sounds um, good. And, and it's going to be the 3rd to the 13th of uh, March at the Rhino Room. Yeah, in 2020. Uh, and a jam-packed, jam-packed with luckiest, yeah. with music. A bit of controversy. We're going to get a okay. bit controversial right. too because, uh, of course, this is a very controversial time in history. Yeah. Um, so we're going to have a lot of fun with that. Shake everything up. Yeah. As oh, that they say. Good. Yeah. So, guys, if you're in Adelaide in March 2020 for the Adelaide Fringe, make sure you check out George's show. I'll put a link in the description below. So, George, tell me, you've done film, television, comedy, stage shows, music. What's your favourite platform? A favourite platform? It, it varies. You know, I'm just about to. Uh, I've just done a, a four part series with uh, the Fat Pizza yep. people playing Ronald McDougall yep. again. I saw that. that probably and that was great yeah. doing that for a bit. Yep. I like to keep it new, always new, something different. You know, if I'm not doing it, some TV, you know, do some stand-up. Then I get over doing stand-up and I want to do some music. So I've got a band called The Songs of Countdown. I do okay. a lot of shows in Melbourne. Actually, I've done a few here too, in Adelaide. So then I do a bit of music. Then I get over that. Then, you know, uh, but if I was to do the one thing all the time, I wouldn't be happy. Yeah. So love doing a bit of, uh, you know, straight theatre or film as well. Uh, musicals, I've done, of course, you know, your Chitty Chitty Bang Bangs and your, you know, Oh What A Nights and what have you. Um, so, so for me, variety, you know, is my spice of life. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a really fussy eater but with my yeah. performing. Yeah. I like to mix it up. <laughs> now, I'm going to ask you a couple of food-related questions. Now, I'll, well, before we start with the food, yeah. I just got to tell you, when I was a kid, I was a pain in the ass. Okay. Because I'd only eat meat and potatoes, and that was it. So, that's where my journey begins. Okay. So, ask away. That's a good segue, George. What's your favourite meal to cook? So, my favourite meal... Well, I married a Greek girl, so she took okay. over the kitchen, yep, right? Kitchen. Okay. All right. But, before then... Oh, this is bad. Okay, there was a dish that I really did well, and it was called... It was called pasta soup, right? Okay which an ex-girlfriend, no, an ex-wife taught me. Yes. And it's, it's pasta. It's uh, like tomato soup, canned soup, yep. leeks, uh, and uh, uh, penne, I think it's, okay. no, no, shells, shells yep. pasta. Yep. And there's a garnish of bacon and sour cream. And it's the best thing to, to have on a cold night. But uh, you can only have it once. You can't heat it up because it smells terrible <laughs> afterwards. But it's so tasty and so yummy and it makes you feel so happy. Even my mum started cooking it. Wow. She okay. liked it so much. Yeah. So I think that's my specialty. You know, okay. I can say I cook chops. I cook great chops, but yeah. every man cooks great Check chops. chops. Yeah. Um, I used to do a dish which was called Potatoes from Hell, which I love, which I pinched off a TV show. And um, that was you cut up the potatoes and you throw in garlic into the oil you throw the, the potatoes in there and you cover them with turmeric and they come out crunchy. That's another one of my favourites yep. oh, when I used to cook. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff I haven't cooked for a while. I do great toasted sandwiches. What can I That's say? Easy. What's your favourite takeaway? I would love a great souvlaki, especially here in Adelaide. Uh, Scardo is my favourite yep. in semaphore. Uh, in fact, that was my plan today until I run out of time. Yep. But anyway, and there's yarnies. I love yarnies as well. So I love a good pork uh, gyros or... Yep. Of, lucky. of course, we've got 
Oakley in Melbourne, and there's so many great place, yeah. places to go to. Mythos is my favourite because the pork is like the pork in Greece, you know. Yeah. And that's one of my favourite things that I found in Greece was the quality of their pork is different to ours. Yeah, you know, it's bigger, yeah. it's tender, it's delicious. Yeah. And then here we can just get dry pieces of... What it's is that? It even has a different smell. Even it's even it's got just, that smell. Yeah, yeah. Someone said to me the other day, it's because, you know, it's you know you've got to, you've got to use um, the pig. It's got to be either female or young because if it's old, then it's got the testosterone smell and yeah. all that sort of thing, which we you know we we get we miss out on yeah. for some reason. Yeah. Um, but I, I love I love a good souvlaki. Uh, I love Asian food. I love all the Asian food, but my kids don't like Asian food. But mind you, they've started liking Korean barbecue. Okay. And teppanyaki, yeah. which is good. It's a good start. Yeah, that's a good way to And I've got to tell you, my kids are eating more dishes than what I was, what I was eating at that age. Yeah. And I guess kids' palates, it changes over the years. But we went to Greece and we kept on being told off by our relatives. You know, your kids don't eat. They don't try anything. Mind you, they're serving us bumias, which is like... <laughs> It's like beans that have been rolled in snot and hair yeah. in a hairdressing salon. You want my kids to eat? I don't eat that sort of stuff. You know, give them some asparagus. At least yeah. it's easier to eat. Yeah. What is that? Anyway, and I was telling my kids, we're going to go there, we're going to eat souvlaki, you know, you're going to love it, it's going to be great. And we were offered vegan dishes all the time, yeah. and it was like my kids were over it. Anyway, but, um, yeah, so, the, you know, your palate's change. And they, I didn't eat rice when I was a kid. My kids eat rice. They, I didn't eat you know, Greek salad. My kids eat Greek salad. So there's a lot of dishes that they, they're the winners. Yeah. You know, tomato. Yeah. I still don't eat tomato. Okay. Not even in Greece? Don't tell anyone. No. In Greece, they love it. They eat it like a fruit. So they so eat that it tastes very different. They eat it well. like watermelon, yeah. but it is juicier. It yeah, is, yeah. it hasn't got the same flavour. Yeah. And it's funny, maybe if we lived in Greece, you know, our palates would be different. It's different, yeah. Um, so what were we talking about? Yeah, it's yeah, so lucky, your favourite yeah, so it's of lucky is my favourite dish. I love Nando's. I love yeah. Portuguese chicken. I love all that sort of stuff. You know, any meat dish I love. Yeah, and 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 I wish uh, my kids were more into kind of Chinese and uh, you know Malaysian and Thai food because that'd be that'd be great because then we could we could go out more and try more things, uh, which which they will they will change yeah. over the years. As you can get older, your palate yeah, changes. Yeah. So George, what's your snack? My favourite snack to put together. It's lunchtime. And I've gone, uh, yeah, all my fans have come in, that's good. Uh, my favourite snack is a toasted sandwich. So if you've got a bit of roast chicken in the uh, fridge or some salami or some ham and you put it under the griller and you put Swiss cheese, you put the whatever meat you're using, put it on top, but the secret is on the outside of the bread you put a, a dob of butter. So the butter melts into the sandwich. That is my favourite snack. That sounds really That's good. That's my favourite yeah. snack. That's and sad. you can use any last night's of Lucky, you can use anything you want. So I've got one more question. It's a challenge question. I want you to pick four ingredients, then I'm gonna go away and try and come up with a recipe oh. based on what you chose. Alright, okay, got it. It's gonna be simple, but I think it's gonna be something that I'm gonna love eating. Yep. Avocado. Bacon. Cheese. Egg and dough. I can work with that. Right. Okay, that sounds It's going to be the best pastry you've ever tasted.
So do you just want to tell the people again about March 2020 in Adelaide? Uh, Adelaide Fringe, 3rd to the 13th of March at the Rhino Room, uh, A Night at the Wapra, myself and Gab Rossi. Uh, stand up, musical, wop and roll, spectacular. Thanks again, George, for appearing in this episode of What's Your Snack. You've always been a big inspiration. You've inspired me to come up with my own characters and do comedy sketches. So it was a real honour having you on the show. Looking forward to seeing this. Yeah. So really great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, George. Thank you. Doing this interview. Thank you very much, Chris. It's really great to have you here. A little bit of heat, you know. Sriracha is my favourite friend. You know oh, that. Okay, yeah, that's a yeah, spicy that's, that's a great yeah. sauce. And now they are. I heard the other day. Oh yeah, I heard the other day. <laughs> I heard the other day. I think my fans are here, so we better hurry up this interview. <laughs>